Many of you have been asking us many questions, and we have been adapting our presentation, and we are going to show the, we are going to answer the questions that some of you already asked us. I swear all these questions are from you. Uh, so the most obvious one was, what is Avalok? Where are we located, and what do we do? Yes. Avalok is a Swiss company. We're over 25 years old, and um, we've been building core banking uh, solutions in Switzerland as, yeah, for 25 years, since 1991. We're actually one year older than uh, eSign, um, I believe. Um, we have uh, over 150 customers. Our platform uh, manages over $4 trillion dollars in assets, of which 700 billion are in our own data centers where we run business process outsourcing uh, services for some of our customers. Right. Some people were uh, helping, was, uh, this question was helping them to categorize, uh, so which are our competitors? Yeah. We don't quite like to talk about our competitors, but uh, Temenos is uh, one of our big competitors. Right. Another question was, which is the biggest installation that we have? Yeah. We're actually in the process of doing that. Um, it's Raiffeisen Bank in Switzerland. It's a cooperative bank with 250-plus uh, branches and uh, over 10,000 um, employees. We're building a front office solution on top of our systems. And uh, what makes it quite complex is that each one of these banks is a separate business unit. So we're actually building a data center to manage uh, these 250-plus um, business units on top of our platform. Right, and when we were showing this picture, people were like, oh, there are very good names there, very, very famous. But they were asking specifically about this cantonal bank. What are these cantonal yeah. banks? Are they Swiss? Yes, they're Swiss banks. In Switzerland, we have uh, 26 cantons, so that's 26 jurisdictions. And um, the federal law requires that each canton has its own uh, state bank that uh, backs the Canton's operations. And uh, we've made it one of our specialties in Switzerland, in Switzerland to serve these uh, cantonal banks. So if, they, if the, the state trusts on these cantonal banks and they trust on us, it's a good, it's a good sign, right? That's what we like to think, yes. <laughs> right. Um, James from South Africa was asking us, uh, are we available in South Africa? Sadly, we aren't. We're in over 25 countries, mainly in Europe and Asia. Our next expansion area is North America, and uh, we don't yet have uh, enough leads, uh, I believe, in South Africa to set up an office there. Right, and um, so with all this experience, with uh, people were like, okay, what are you going to talk about? You're going to talk, because there are many, th many topics to talk about. Why are we here? There's no way with the 15 minutes we've been given today we could talk about our whole platform. Um, what we want to talk to you about is what we've been building in the last few years um, on top of our bank of a core banking system is um, a platform that helps you integrate your solutions for our customers. Um, we provide the core banking. We provide some ready-built applications. And uh, this platform makes it easy for third-party integration, makes it easy for the customers to really get um, custom features that no other banks has on our platform. It's easy to build uh, APIs, to build UIs, and of course, uh, get a seamless branding experience across all these um, integrated solutions that aren't coming from the same sources. And of course, we want the customer to think, really, it's just one single application, one single user experience. Right, and at this point, many people were saying, like, integrating my application, and they were like, can you be more concrete, Florian? Yes. So as I said, we build this platform on top of our core system. And we want it, um, depending on the problem you're trying to solve, depending on the time to market uh, that's important to you, to integrate at a very high level in the UI or um, down in our aggregation or even in our core service layer. Um, it really depends on what problems you're trying to solve, what your solution uh, does for the customer, and um, yeah, how involved you want to be with, with our uh, business functionality. And another question was, should I integrate my solution in this core banking system that you're mentioning? Yeah. So let's go through a bit more in detail. 
So if you really want to be tightly integrated into uh, our core system, uh, in some cases that might make sense. Um, we provide uh, a DSL language for exposing features out of the core system. Uh, so you can expose what you've implemented in the core system as a SOAP or a RESTful service. This is what's going to enable us in the next um, 18 months or so to uh, put out uh, our business APIs in a public format as well as uh, implement uh, PSD2 APIs. Right, people were asking like, what is this uh, coming from? Uh, how is this going to be ready in early 2018? Yeah. So the layer is there. You can today build these services. Um, we're hard at work implementing uh, our first batch of, of business APIs and PSD2, and we expect our first customers to go live uh, with PSD2 uh, somewhere in early 2018. All right, and they were also concerned, okay, how can then I integrate my REST API? Yeah, we have to go to the next layer. Most often for third-party integration, this is the layer at which you want to do it. Um, it's an aggregation layer where you can build REST services and combine the data coming in or out, or going out to your uh, third-party system with our data. You can also use it to prepare data for the web if you have large amounts of data but you want to serve very thin streams up to the web UIs. Right, uh, and talking about the web UIs, James also was asking, uh, we have many teams and each team developed their own concepts of user experience and he was asking how do you, how do we resolve that? Yeah. So. We made a, quite an experience a few years back um, trying to get many different teams uh, in our multiple development centers all working on UI uh, modules and what we found was that just standardizing on technology and uh, some coding principle wasn't enough. So we set out to build a framework that we use internally today with about 15 teams that we provide to our customers uh, and to third party integrators. Uh, of standard web and business components. We also provided an uh, in-browser communication API so that components that weren't developed by the same teams or even in the same uh, organization can uh, talk to each other directly in the browser. And of course, we, providing, we provide a, uh, a method for styling all of these UIs so that the user gets really a seamless uh, user experience <laughs> that's branded to the customer's needs, of course. Right. Uh, Florian is explaining more, is expanding more here because this is what we do. This is the team that we are. And this framework is part of our daily, improving this framework is what we do normally. Um, another question is, okay, what about all this? What is available today? Yeah, maybe I can show you on yeah. our developer portal yep. what we have. Oh, developer.avaloc.com. We'll get you to our website, and uh, simply providing us an email address and a password is all that you need to uh, join in. And on this website, you will find out, of course, about our whole model, the whole stack I was, I was uh, telling you about. We'll tell you also what you need to be able to develop on this stack. We try to make it uh, as much as possible uh, for developers to work um, offline or off of one of our servers when developing components. We also provide online forums. Um, actually, maybe I'll just go there right away. Um, it's a, a forum that we set up that's very similar to um, uh, Stack Overflow, where uh, you get questions answered directly from us. We're some of the people who actually answered th these questions. Uh, the core teams working on the framework are uh, participating in these forums. But also, we provide um, an API catalog of the available today, mostly SOAP services. As I said, uh, they will be available very soon uh, as REST-based services. We also have, um, if you're interested in building in the aggregation layer, your um, REST services for basically integrating where we'll provide security, we'll provide uh, deployment uh, infrastructure, um, we'll provide um, logging and other, other basic details that you need so that you can just focus on the, the business functionality in your REST service. And we also have the um, documentation around the JavaScript framework that we've built. 
where we explain the concepts and provide you guides to get started, but we also provide, um, where is it, selection filters. This is, the, this yeah. is what we do, right? This is the, the so, framework, the library that we build. Yeah. We've gone out and, and built really these set of components because we know that it's not everybody's specialty to build UIs, and we know that it's not an, an easy task sometimes. So we've provided a, a live coding environment in which um, you can uh, take code examples, or maybe this is something you're taking from code you're working on and uh, it's not quite working as you would like to, and you can bring it into our um, showcase and get live coding features, basically, which are going to uh, change the, the UI in real time and find out if you're now in, in this isolated environment what's not working with your code. If not, you can send it to us and we can analyze it and send you back maybe some corrections on that code so that uh, you can make your UI uh, exactly the way you want it to be. Right, and they could copy these codes and put it in their application, connect with their APIs and make it work. Exactly. This was not a specific question, but when we were talking about the developer portal, people were quite quite interested in knowing more about the software exchange program. Could you explain more about this, yeah. uh, please? So of course, a lot of you don't have um, full applications to build. You have applications you want to integrate, or there's not a whole lot uh, left to build if you want to integrate with us. And we have an onboarding process for um, third parties, fintechs, and other groups who want to integrate with us, where we provide uh, a process for getting approved and, and and getting uh, certified as uh, usable, runnable w with our platform because we want to make sure that uh, our customers who are going to integrate these third-party tools have a head start. They know that this technology will work with our platform. And to this date, we have a, a catalog that's already on online of uh, partners that we already have that are ready to be integrated into our platform. Right. So for the last minute and a half, let's summary. Yes, of course. So there's two things that we would like you to take from this presentation today. First of all is that Avalok brings 25 years of experience, over 150 customers um, to the game, and uh, we think that it's a, a very valuable um, asset to present to you. And the other thing is that uh, we're building an open platform on top of our core system, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to integrate your solutions into our customers' banking environments. Right, so we have homework for you. Just go to the developer.avalog.com portal, sign up, integrate with the applications that you have been showing us these days, and start selling. Thank you very much. First question is, how long does it take to integrate your systems with a new bank? That all depends on how much customization they want to do. Um, Avalok has built its whole brand on top of uh, extensive customization uh, possibilities. And um, we have customers that uh, have implemented our new applications in one to two years with actually many rollouts in that period, so where they go to production uh, two or three times in that period, expanding the amount of features available. We also have our business processing centers, which um, provide um, uh, sort of a SaaS solution, a re ready built, ready configured uh, startup banking package. And those, I think, can go uh, quite a bit faster. But for integrate these, they already, we already have all the setup made for them, right? Yes. So they don't have to yeah. go through that process again. Yes. And our business process outsourcing centers are essentially data centers with some uh, business processing on top. So um, yeah, it's just a matter of, of getting your requirements into that environment, and you can have a running system. What's the technology stack on our preferred programming languages? The database is Oracle. If I'm not wrong, uh, we are one of the best, uh, one of the biggest uh, resellers of Oracle worldwide. Yep. Uh, and then we have a Java layer for the back end. And on the top, we have JavaScript and AngularJS. Is it possible to migrate from another system like Apsys to your system? I don't know Apsys, but we've been migrating a number of customers from uh, Creologix and uh, from other systems where they, they were using uh, for their web, for their e-banking, uh, a separate solution. 
and uh, we've migrated them away from that, yes. And the next question is, do you have different APIs published on the, on the web? Yes, and as Florian was showing before, we work very hard on making good documentation so you can go directly and, and see the, these yeah. APIs. But as, as I said, this is an area that's gonna be growing a lot in uh, the next uh, six to 12 months. It's an area where we, we have a bit of catching up to do uh, at the moment. Do you actually need an office in a country to be able to do banking business? No, so I, I was talking about South Africa. We, we do actually have a few customers uh, in North Africa. Um, I, I think the, I'm not aware that we have any customers in, in South Africa. It's true that we don't have to have an office there, but uh, I might be wrong. Uh, I'll have to check on that. How do you deal with version management? That's a good question. <laughs> For components built by external parties, yes. So at the moment, we release our software every month, and we also uh, release our um, APIs and our frameworks toolkits also every month so that if you're going live with a certain version of our, um, our whole stack, you have access to um, the packages, the libraries, the development tools as well. Last question is, uh, what are our views for open platforms? Are they the future? Uh, of course they are. I mean, ev this is an ever-evolving um, world, yeah. right? The, we have to adapt very quickly. And the best solution, I would say, is to offer this uh, customization, right, this agile yeah. development. Yeah, I think the time of Big Bang deployments, Big Bang solutions is over, and we have to build adaptive solutions. And having an open platform means um, we, can, we can slowly integrate one solution or replace solutions one after the other rather than try to replace, clear the slate and start over. Right. Thank you very much.